Success means successful living. A long period of peace, joy, and happiness on this plane may be termed success. The real things of life, such as peace, harmony, integrity, security, and happiness are intangible. They come from the deep self of man. Meditating on these qualities builds these treasures of heaven in our subconscious. Let us discuss three steps to success. The first step to success is to find out the thing you love to do, then do it. Success is in loving your work, although if a man is a psychiatrist, it is not adequate for him to get a diploma and place it on the wall. He must keep up with the times, attend conventions, and continue studying the mind and its workings. The successful psychiatrist visits clinics and reads the latest scientific articles. In other words, he is informed in the most advanced methods of alleviating human suffering. The most successful psychiatrist or doctor must have the interest of his patients at heart. Someone may say, how can I put the first step into operation? I do not know what I should do. In such a case, pray for guidance as follows. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me my true place in life. Repeat this prayer quietly, positively, and lovingly to your deeper mind. As you persist with faith and confidence, the answer will come to you as a feeling, a hunch, or a tendency in a certain direction. It will come to you clearly and in peace, and as an inner silent awareness. The second step to success is to specialize in some particular branch of work and know more about it than anyone else. For example, if a young man chooses chemistry as his profession, he should concentrate on one of the many branches in this field. He should give all of his time and attention to this chosen specialty. He should become sufficiently enthusiastic to try to know all there is available about his field. If possible, he should know more than anyone else. The young man should become ardently interested in his work and should desire to serve the world. He that is greatest among you, let him become your servant. There is a great contrast in this attitude of mind in comparison to that of the man who only wants to make a living or just get by. Getting by is not true success. Man's motive must be greater, nobler, and more altruistic. He must serve others, thereby casting his bread upon the waters. The third step is the most important one. You must be sure that the thing you want to do does not redound to your success only. Your desire must not be selfish. It must benefit humanity. The path of a complete circuit must be formed. In other words, your idea must go forth with the purpose of blessing or serving the world. It will then come back to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If it is to benefit yourself exclusively, the circle or complete circuit is not formed, and you may experience a short circuit in your life which may consist of limitation or sickness. The Measure of True Success Some people may say, but Mr. James made a fortune in selling fraudulent oil stock. A man may seem to succeed for a while, but the money he obtained by fraud usually takes wings and flies away. When we rob from another, we rob from ourselves, because we are in a mood of lack and limitation which may manifest itself in our body, home life, and affairs. What we think and feel, we create. We create what we believe. Even though a man may have accumulated a fortune fraudulently, he is not successful. There is no success without peace of mind. What good is man's accumulated wealth if he cannot sleep nights, is sick, or has a guilt complex? I knew a man in London who told me of his exploits. He had been a professional pickpocket and had amassed a large amount of money. He had a summer home in France and lived in royal fashion in England. His story was that he was in constant dread of being arrested by Scotland Yard. He had many inner disorders, which were undoubtedly caused by his constant fear and deep-seated guilt complex. He knew he had done wrong. This deep sense of guilt attracted all kinds of trouble to him. Subsequently, he voluntarily surrendered to the police and served a prison sentence. 
After his release from prison, he sought psychological and spiritual counsel and became transformed. He went to work and became an honest, law-abiding citizen. He found what he loved to do and was happy. A successful person loves his work and expresses himself fully. Success is contingent upon a higher ideal than the mere accumulation of riches. The man of success is the man who possesses great psychological and spiritual understanding. Many of the great industrialists today depend upon the correct use of their subconscious minds for their success. There was an article published some years ago about Flagler, an oil magnate. He admitted that the secret of his success was his ability to see a project in its completion. For instance, in his case, he closed his eyes, imagined a big oil industry, saw trains running on tracks, heard whistles blowing, and saw smoke. Having seen and felt the fulfillment of his prayer, his subconscious mind brought about its realization. If you imagine an objective clearly, you will be provided with the necessities, in ways you know not of, through the wonder-working power of your subconscious mind. In considering the three steps to success, you must never forget the underlying power of the creative forces of your subconscious mind. This is the energy in back of all steps in any plan of success. Your thought is creative. Thought fused with feeling becomes a subjective faith or belief, and according to your belief is it done unto you. Knowledge of a mighty force in you which is capable of bringing to pass all your desires gives you confidence and a sense of peace. Whatever your field of action may be, you should learn the laws of your subconscious mind. When you know how to apply the powers of your mind and when you are expressing yourself fully and giving of your talents to others, you are on the sure path to true success. If you are about God's business or any part of it, God, by His very nature, is for you. So, who can be against you? With this understanding, there is no power in heaven or on earth to withhold success from you. How He Made His Dream Come True A movie actor told me that he had very little education, but he had a dream as a boy of becoming a successful movie actor. Out in the field mowing hay, driving the cows home, or even milking them, he said, I would constantly imagine I saw my name in big lights at a large theater. I kept this up for years until finally I ran away from home. I got extra jobs in the motion picture field, and the day finally came when I saw my name in great big lights as I did when I was a boy. Then he added, I know the power of sustained imagination to bring success. His dream pharmacy became a reality. Thirty years ago, I knew a young pharmacist who was receiving $40 a week plus commission on sales. After 25 years, he said to me, I will get a pension and retire. I said to this young man, why don't you own your own store? Get out of this place. Raise your sights. Have a dream for your children. Maybe your son wants to be a doctor. Perhaps your daughter desires to be a great musician. His answer was that he had no money. He began to awaken to the fact that whatever he could conceive as true, he could give conception. The first step toward his goal was his awakening to the powers of his subconscious mind, which I briefly elaborated on for his benefit. His second step was his realization that if he could succeed in conveying an idea to his subconscious mind, the latter would somehow bring it to pass. He began to imagine that he was in his own store. He mentally arranged the bottles, dispensed prescriptions, and imagined several clerks in the store waiting on customers. He also visualized a big bank balance. Mentally, he worked in that imaginary store. Like a good actor, he lived the role. Act as though I am, and I will be. This pharmacist put himself wholeheartedly into the act, living, moving, and acting on the assumption that he owned the store. The sequel was interesting. He was discharged from his position. He found new employment with a large chain store, became manager, and later on district manager. He saved enough money in four years to provide a down payment on a drug store of his own. He called it his dream pharmacy. It was, he said, exactly the store I saw in my imagination. 
He became a recognized success in his chosen field and was happy doing what he loved to do. Using the Subconscious Mind in Business Some years ago, I gave a lecture to a group of businessmen on the powers of imagination and the subconscious mind. In this lecture, I pointed out how Goeth used his imagination wisely when confronted with difficulties and predicaments. His biographers point out that he was accustomed to fill many hours quietly holding imaginary conversations. It is well known that his custom was to imagine one of his friends before him in a chair answering him in the right way. In other words, if he were concerned over any problems, he imagined his friend giving him the right or appropriate answer, accompanied with the usual gestures and tonal qualities of the voice, and he made the entire imaginary scene as real and as vivid as possible. One of the men present at this lecture was a young stockbroker. He proceeded to adopt the technique of Goeth. He began to have mental, imaginary conversations with a multi-millionaire banker friend of his who used to congratulate him on his wise and sound judgment and compliment him on his purchase of the right stocks. He used to dramatize this imaginary conversation until he had psychologically fixed it as a form of belief in his mind. This broker's inner talking and controlled imagination certainly agreed with his aim, which was to make sound investments for his clients. His main purpose in life was to make money for his clients and to see them prosper financially by his wise counsel. He is still using his subconscious mind in his business, and he is a brilliant success in his field of endeavor. Boy of 16 years turns failure into success. A young boy who was attending high school said to me, I am getting very poor grades. My memory is failing. I do not know what is the matter. I discovered that the only thing wrong with this boy was his attitude, which was one of indifference and resentment towards some of his teachers and fellow students. I taught him how to use his subconscious mind and how to succeed in his studies. He began to affirm certain truths several times a day, particularly at night prior to sleep, and also in the morning after awakening. These are the best times to impregnate the subconscious mind. He affirmed as follows, I realize that my subconscious mind is a storehouse of memory. It retains everything I read and hear from my teachers. I have a perfect memory and the infinite intelligence in my subconscious mind constantly reveals to me everything I need to know at all my examinations, whether written or oral. I radiate love and goodwill to all my teachers and fellow students. I sincerely wish for them success in all good things. This young man is now enjoying a greater freedom than he has ever known. He is now receiving all A's. He constantly imagines the teachers and his mother congratulating him on his success in his studies. How to become successful in buying and selling. In buying and selling, remember that your conscious mind is the starter and your subconscious mind is the motor. You must start the motor to enable it to perform its work. Your conscious mind is the dynamo that awakens the power of your subconscious mind. The first step in conveying your clarified desire, idea, or image to the deeper mind is to relax, immobilize the attention, get still, and be quiet. This quiet, relaxed, and peaceful attitude of mind prevents extraneous matter and false ideas from interfering with your mental absorption of your ideal. Furthermore, in a quiet, passive, and receptive attitude of mind, effort is reduced to a minimum. The second step is to begin to imagine the reality of that which you desire. For example, you may wish to buy a home and in your relaxed state of mind affirm as follows. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind is all wise. It reveals to me now the ideal home, which is central, ideal, is in a lovely environment, meets with all my requirements, and is commensurate with my income. I am now turning this request over to my subconscious mind, and I know it responds according to the nature of my request. I release this request with absolute faith and confidence in the same way that a farmer deposits a seed in the ground, trusting implicitly in the laws of growth.
The answer to your prayer may come through an advertisement in the paper, through a friend, or you may be guided directly to a particular home, which is exactly what you are seeking. There are many ways by which your prayer may be answered. The principal knowledge in which you may place your confidence is that the answer always comes, provided you trust the working of your deeper mind. You may wish to sell a home, land, or any kind of property. In private consultation with real estate brokers, I have told them of the way I sold my own home on Orlando Avenue in Los Angeles. Many of them have applied the technique I used with remarkable and speedy results. I placed the sign which read, For Sale by Owner, in the garden in front of my home. The day after I said to myself as I was going to sleep, Supposing you sold your house, what would you do? I answered my own question, and I said I would take that sign down and throw it in the garage. In my imagination, I took hold of the sign, pulled it up from the ground, placed it on my shoulder, went to the garage, threw it on the floor, and said jokingly to the sign, I don't need you anymore. I felt the inner satisfaction of it all, realizing it was finished. The next day, a man gave me a deposit of $1,000 and said to me, Take your sign down. We will go into escrow now. Immediately, I pulled the sign up and took it to the garage. The outer action conformed to the inner. There is nothing new about this. As within, so without, meaning according to the image impressed on your subconscious mind, so it is on the objective screen of your life. The outside mirrors the inside. External action follows internal action. Here is another very popular method used in selling homes, land, or any kind of property. Affirm slowly, quietly, and feelingly as follows. Infinite intelligence attracts to me the buyer for this home who wants it and who prospers in it. This buyer is being sent to me by the creative intelligence of my subconscious mind, which makes no mistakes. This buyer may look at many other homes, but mine is the only one he wants and will buy, because he is guided by the infinite intelligence within him. I know the buyer is right, the time is right, and the price is right. Everything about it is right. The deeper currents of my subconscious mind are now in operation, bringing both of us together in divine order. I know that it is so. Remember always that what you are seeking is also seeking you, and whenever you want to sell a home or property of any kind, there is always someone who wants what you have to offer. By using the powers of your subconscious mind correctly, you free your mind of all sense of competition and anxiety in buying and selling. How she succeeded in getting what she wanted. There is a young lady who regularly comes to my lectures and classes. She had to change buses three times. It took her one and a half hours each time to come to the lectures. In one lecture, I explained how a young man who needed a car in his work received one. She went home and experimented as outlined in my lecture. Here is her letter in part narrating her application of my method and published by her permission. Dear Mr. Murphy, this is how I received a Cadillac car. I wanted one to come to the lectures regularly. In my imagination, I went through the identical process I would go through if I were actually driving a car. I went to the showroom and the salesman took me for a ride in one. I also drove it several blocks. I claimed the Cadillac car as my own over and over again. I kept the mental picture of getting into the car, driving it, feeling the upholstery, etc., constantly for over two weeks. Last week, I drove to your lectures in a Cadillac. My uncle in Inglewood passed away and left me his Cadillac and his entire estate. A success technique employed by many outstanding executives and businessmen. There are many prominent businessmen who quietly use the abstract term success over and over many times a day until they reach a conviction that success is theirs. They know that the idea of success contains all the essential elements of success. Likewise, you can begin now to repeat the word success to yourself with faith and conviction. Your subconscious mind will accept it as true of you and you will be under a subconscious compulsion to succeed.
You are compelled to express your subjective beliefs, impressions, and convictions. What does success imply to you? You want, undoubtedly, to be successful in your home life and in your relationship with others. You wish to be outstanding in your chosen work or profession. You wish to possess a beautiful home and all the money you need to live comfortably and happily. You want to be successful in your prayer life and in your contact with the powers of your subconscious mind. You are a businessman also because you are in the business of living. Become a successful businessman by imagining yourself doing what you long to do and possessing the things you long to possess. Become imaginative. Mentally participate in the reality of the successful state. Make a habit of it. Go to sleep feeling successful every night and perfectly satisfied and you will eventually succeed in implanting the idea of success in your subconscious mind. Believe you were born to succeed and wonders will happen as you pray. Many scientists realize the true importance of the subconscious mind. Edison, Marconi, Kettering, Poincare, Einstein and many others have used the subconscious mind. It has given them the insight and the know-how for all their great achievements in modern science and industry. Research has shown that the ability to bring into action the subconscious power has determined the success of all the great scientific and research workers. An instance of how a famous chemist, Friedrich von Stratenitz, used his subconscious mind to solve his problem is as follows. He had been working laboriously for a long time trying to rearrange the six carbon and the six hydrogen atoms of the benzene formula, and he was constantly perplexed and unable to solve the matter. Tired and exhausted, he turned the request over completely to his subconscious mind. Shortly afterward, as he was about to board a London bus, his subconscious presented his conscious mind with a sudden flash of a snake biting its own tail and turning around like a pinwheel. This answer from his subconscious mind gave him the long sought answer of the circular rearrangement of the atoms that is known as the benzene ring. How a distinguished scientist brought forth his inventions. Nikola Tesla was a brilliant electrical scientist who brought forth the most amazing innovations. When an idea for a new invention came into his mind, he would build it up in his imagination knowing that his subconscious mind would reconstruct and reveal to his conscious mind all the parts needed for its manufacture in concrete form. Through quietly contemplating every possible improvement, he spent no time in correcting defects and was able to give the technicians the perfect product of his mind. He said, invariably, my device works as I imagined it should. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. How a famous naturalist solved his problem. Professor Agassiz, a distinguished American naturalist, discovered the indefatigable activities of his subconscious mind while he slept. His widow, in her biography of her famous husband, has reported the following. He had been for two weeks striving to decipher the somewhat obscure impression of a fossil fish on the stone slab in which it was preserved. Weary and perplexed, he put his work aside at last and tried to dismiss it from his mind. Shortly after, he waked one night persuaded that while asleep he had seen his fish with all the missing features perfectly restored. But when he tried to hold and make fast the image, it escaped him. Nevertheless, he went early to the Jardin des Plantes, thinking that on looking anew at the impression, he should see something which would put him back on the track of his vision. In vain, the blurred record was as black as ever. The next night, he saw the fish again but with no more satisfactory result. When he awoke, it disappeared from his memory as before. Hoping that the same experience might be repeated, on the third night he placed a pencil and paper beside his bed before going to sleep. Accordingly, toward morning the fish reappeared in his dream. Confusedly at first, but at last with such distinctness that he had no longer any doubt as to its zoological characters. Still half-dreaming in perfect darkness, he traced these characters on the sheet of paper at the bedside. In the morning, he was surprised to see in his nocturnal sketch features which he thought it impossible the fossil itself should reveal. 
He hastened to the Jardin des Plantes and, with his drawing as a guide, succeeded in chiseling away the surface of the stone under which portions of the fish proved to be hidden. When wholly expressed, it corresponded with his dream and his drawing, and he succeeded in classifying it with ease. And outstanding physicians solved the problem of diabetes. Some years ago, I received a clipping from a magazine describing the origin of the discovery of insulin. This is the essence of the article as I recall it. About 40 years ago or more, Dr. Frederick Banting, a brilliant Canadian physician and surgeon, was concentrating his attention on the ravages of diabetes. At that time, medical science offered no effective method of arresting the disease. Dr. Banting spent considerable time experimenting and studying the international literature on the subject. One night he was exhausted and fell asleep. While asleep, his subconscious mind instructed him to extract the residue from the degenerated pancreatic duct of dogs. This was the origin of insulin which has helped millions of people. You will note that Dr. Banting had been consciously dwelling on the problem for some time seeking a solution, a way out, and his subconscious responded accordingly. It does not follow that you will always get an answer overnight. The answer may not come for some time. Do not be discouraged. Keep on turning the problem over every night to the subconscious mind prior to sleep as if you had never done it before. One of the reasons for the delay may be that you look upon it as a major problem. You may believe it will take a long time to solve. Your subconscious mind is timeless and spaceless. Go to sleep believing you have the answer now. Do not postulate the answer in the future. Have an abiding faith in the outcome. Become convinced now as you read this book that there is an answer and a perfect solution for you. How a famous scientist and physicist escaped from a Russian concentration camp. Dr. Lothar van Blank Schmidt, a member of the Rocket Society and an outstanding research electronic engineer, gives the following condensed summary of how he used his subconscious mind to free himself from certain death at the hands of brutal guards in a Russian prison camp coal mine. He states as follows. I was a prisoner of war in a coal mine in Russia, and I saw men dying all around me in that prison compound. We were watched over by brutal guards, arrogant officers, and sharp, fast-thinking commissaires. After a short medical checkup, a quota of coal was assigned to each person. My quota was 300 pounds per day. In case any man did not fill his quota, his small food ration was cut down, and in a short time he was resting in the cemetery. I started concentrating on my escape. I knew that my subconscious mind would somehow find a way. My home in Germany was destroyed. My family wiped out. All my friends and former associates were either killed in the war or were in concentration camps. I said to my subconscious mind, I want to go to Los Angeles and you will find the way. I had seen pictures of Los Angeles and I remembered some of the boulevards very well as well as some of the buildings. Every day and night I would imagine I was walking down Wilshire Boulevard with an American girl whom I met in Berlin prior to the war. She is now my wife. In my imagination we would visit the stores, ride buses, and eat in the restaurants. Every night I made it a special point to drive my imaginary American automobile up and down the boulevards of Los Angeles. I made all this vivid and real. These pictures in my mind were as real and as natural to me as one of the trees outside the prison camp. Every morning the chief guard would count the prisoners as they were lined up. He would call out one, two, three, etc. And when 17 was called out, which was my number in sequence, I stepped aside. In the meantime, the guard was called away for a minute or so. And on his return, he started by mistake on the next man as number 17. When the crew returned in the evening, the number of men was the same, and I was not missed, and the discovery would take a long time. I walked out of the camp undetected and kept walking for 24 hours, resting in a deserted town the next day. I was able to live by fishing and killing some wildlife. I found coal trains going to Poland and traveled on them by night. 
until finally I reached Poland. With the help of friends, I made my way to Lucerne, Switzerland. One evening at the Palace Hotel, Lucerne, I had a talk with a man and his wife from the United States of America. This man asked me if I would care to be a guest at his home in Santa Monica, California. I accepted, and when I arrived in Los Angeles, I found that their chauffeur drove me along Wilshire Boulevard and many other boulevards, which I had imagined so vividly in the long months in the Russian coal mines. I recognized the buildings, which I had seen in my mind so often. It actually seemed as if I had been to Los Angeles before. I had reached my goal. I will never cease to marvel at the wonders of the subconscious mind. Truly, it has ways we know not of. How Archaeologists and Paleontologists Reconstruct Ancient Scenes These scientists know that their subconscious mind has a memory of everything that has ever transpired. As they study the ancient ruins and fossils through their imaginative perception, their subconscious mind aids them in reconstructing the ancient scenes. The dead past becomes alive and audible once more. Looking at these ancient temples and studying the pottery, statuary, tools, and household utensils of these ancient times, the scientist tells us of an age when there was no language. Communication was done by grunts, groans, and signs. The keen concentration and disciplined imagination of the scientist awakens the latent powers of his subconscious mind, enabling him to clothe the ancient temples with roofs and surround them with gardens, pools, and fountains. The fossil remains are clothed with eyes, sinews, and muscles, and they again walk and talk. The past becomes the living present, and we find that in mind there is no time or space. Through disciplined, controlled, and directed imagination, you can be a companion of the most scientific and inspired thinkers of all time. How to Receive Guidance from Your Subconscious When you have what you term a difficult decision to make, or when you fail to see the solution to your problem, begin at once to think constructively about it. If you are fearful and worried, you are not really thinking. True thinking is free from fear. Here is a simple technique you can use to receive guidance on any subject. Quiet the mind and still the body. Tell the body to relax. It has to obey you. It has no volition, initiative, or self-conscious intelligence. Your body is an emotional disk which records your beliefs and impressions. Mobilize your attention. Focus your thought on the solution to your problem. Try to solve it with your conscious mind. Think how happy you would be about the perfect solution. Sense the feeling you would have if the perfect answer were yours now. Let your mind play with this mood in a relaxed way. Then drop off to sleep. When you awaken and you do not have the answer, get busy about something else. Probably when you are preoccupied with something else, the answer will come into your mind like toast pops out of the toaster. In receiving guidance from your subconscious mind, the simple way is the best. This is an illustration. I once lost a valuable ring, which was an heirloom. I looked everywhere for it and could not locate it. At night, I talked to the subconscious in the same manner that I would talk to anyone. I said to it prior to dropping off to sleep, you know all things. You know where that ring is, and you now reveal to me where it is. In the morning, I awoke suddenly with the words ringing in my ear, Ask Robert. I thought it very strange that I should ask Robert, a young boy about nine years of age. However, I followed the inner voice of intuition. Robert said, Oh yes, I picked it up in the yard while I was playing with the boys. I placed it on the desk in my room. I did not think it worth anything, so I did not say anything about it. The subconscious mind will always answer you if you trust it. His subconscious revealed the location of his father's will. A young man who attends my lectures had this experience. His father died and apparently left no will. However, this man's sister told him that their father had confided to her that a will had been executed which was fair to all. Every attempt to locate the will failed. Prior to sleep, he talked to his deeper mind as follows. I now turn this request over to the subconscious mind. 
It knows just where that will is and reveals it to me. Then he condensed his request down to one word, answer, repeating it over and over again as a lullaby. He lulled himself to sleep with the word answer. The next morning this young man had an overpowering hunch to go to a certain bank in Los Angeles where he found a safe deposit vault registered in the name of his father, the contents of which solved all his problems. Your thought as you go to sleep arouses the powerful latency which is within you. For example, let us suppose you were wondering whether to sell your home, buy a certain stock, sever partnership, move to New York, or stay in Los Angeles, dissolve the present contract, or take a new one. Do this. Sit quietly in your armchair or at the desk in your office. Remember that there is a universal law of action and reaction. The action is your thought. The reaction is the response from your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is reactive and reflexive. This is its nature. It rebounds, rewards, and repays. It is the law of correspondence. It responds by corresponding. As you contemplate right action, you will automatically experience a reaction or response in yourself which represents the guidance or answer of your subconscious mind. In seeking guidance, you simply think quietly about right action, which means that you are using the infinite intelligence residence in your subconscious mind to the point where it begins to use you. From there on, your course of action is directed and controlled by the subjective wisdom within you, which is all-wise and omnipotent. Your decision will be right. There will only be right action because you are under a subjective compulsion to do the right thing. I use the word compulsion because the law of the subconscious is compulsion. The secret of guidance. The secret of guidance or right action is to mentally devote yourself to the right answer until you find its response in you. The response is a feeling, an inner awareness, and an overpowering hunch whereby you know that you know. You have used the power to the point where it begins to use you. You cannot possibly fail or make one false step while operating under the subjective wisdom within you. You will find that all your ways are pleasantness and all your paths are peace.